You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, joined by Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you today? Pete, it's another beautiful day in Central Florida. It's it's the end of the year, Ricky. We've we've made it through 2023. How are you feeling? <laughs> I still got two more days. You're not there yet. You're not <laughs> going to call it good quite yet. I'm not. I'm not there yet. A lot can happen uh, tomorrow and Sunday. Well, things <laughs> are changing rapidly. We know that, right? Which That's is right. one of the reasons we're talking about this subject today: college. Who would have thought, if you look back 10 years ago, that we would be having this conversation seriously questioning whether college is necessary, whether it makes sense for young people coming out of high school today. There's a strong case to be made that it doesn't for a lot of people, that it's not as valuable as it used to be. Is that Does that sound crazy? It does sound crazy. And it, it, it does. It does. Because looking back into when I was growing up, you and I are both Gen Xers. And I'm pretty sure your parents told you the only way to really get a good job is to get a college education, just like my parents told me. And here we are 30 plus years later, and we find out that's not really the case, right? Well, a lot of people are still holding on to it that it is, right? But you just said the words that always get my attention, make my skin crawl when I hear it. It was words that were told to me as well. Get a job. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that <laughs> is just gross to me, right? Yeah. Because if you're a young person, and you have your whole life ahead of you, you have your future and you're, you're optimistic and you're looking forward and thinking, what is, what do I get to do with my life? What kind of impact do I get to have on the world? And you're told, get a job. I mean, wah, 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 right. Where's the music? I have, where is it? Have you got, wah, there you go. You got a ring. Right. What a terrible thing to, to hear. I think it's demoralizing. I think it is the uh, polar opposite message that we should give to young people. I mean, I was listening to a podcast last night about it. It was on Joe Rogan, a guy who's a gold miner, a gold miner. I mean, this guy oh, wow. lives in Alaska, does gold mining. He, he finds you know, mammoth bones. <laughs> like, and I'm thinking, what a life this guy's living, right? And here I am living a boring existence. It's a happy existence. I like what I do. I like where I am. But there's so much to see and explore in the world. And if you're young and told, go to college so you can quote, get a job. I think that's awful. I think life should be about so much more. So a question for you, Pete, are you, are you making that assertion now with the knowledge you have now, or have you always thought that way? Even back when you when our parents told us that we do need to get a job. Well, when you're young, your perspective is limited, right? You're, you don't know any better. So I yeah. was told that and it, it didn't excite me. I'll tell you that. I, I didn't know what, really? no, I didn't know wow. what that meant. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know necessarily what my strengths were at the time, but I was told, Hey, this is the path you need to take. And wow. you know, shame on me perhaps, right. At 18 years old for not stopping and really questioning that deeper, but that's hard to do. I, I think for a lot of young people who College seems safe, right? I wrote a blog about it the other day, and that was the, the, the phrase that I use, so I'll, I'll repeat it now. College feels safe. Going off to Alaska to be a gold miner does not feel safe, <laughs> right? If, you, if, you have a kid, if your kid comes up and says, I'm going to be the next Yukon Cornelius, right? <laughs> and hopefully everyone gets that reference. Shame on you if you don't. Watch your Christmas movies. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Then, you know, if then that, that conversation is not going to go well in most American households. Don't you think? Not today. Not to, well, you know what? I take it back. It might be today. Today, that conversation might go well because look back again, back when we were growing up to me, at least to me, when, when, when my mom told me, here's what I need to do. Because back then the, in order for you to be successful, you needed two things, a job with a pension. Okay. That's what you needed. There, there you go. A pension. Right. And that doesn't ex the fifty percent of that doesn't exist that much anymore, right? The pension is not that's something that you hardly ever hear. But back then, that was the goal: spend thirty years in an organization, you get a gold watch, and you get some kind of a stipend every month for the rest of your life. And the only way that exists today is the federal government or the or the or the, or the military, right? And but if you think about it, that that dependency of you, know, you having your financial future, your well being tied that closely to your employer that to me sounds as insane as being told yeah. get a job like the, you know you know you shouldn't have to be tied to to the employer now that's why 
I'm a big fan of the freelance market, as you know. That's not really what we're talking about today. We've talked about that enough on, on our different shows. Uh, but college is not the given, or I'll say, in my strong opinion, should not be a given for every student coming out of high school, and certainly not as much as it was in the, in the past, right, 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. Here's, here is, here's how I look at it today, right? I think the way America does it right now is wrong. Now, that's just my personal opinion. Because and of course I'm biased with this because what I'm about to say is is it, it's how how I experienced it is the, the way I think the rest of America should do it because unless you know exactly within the bottom of your heart what you want to do with your life, you don't, <laughs> right? right? So if you want to be a doctor and you come from a family of doctors, your life is already already pre you, your career path has already been paved, right? If you name your kid Jeeves. You've already paved your kid's career path, right? He's going to be a dang uh, um, a butler. A right? butler, of course. <laughs> butler, of course, right? Yes. But the way I did it, I think it's the best. I, I finished high school. I didn't go to college right away. I went into the, into, the, into the military. I figured out who I was and what I wanted to do. And then I took college more seriously when I got out. If I started college right after high school, I don't think I would have taken it as seriously as I would have after spending four years traveling the world and having a blast. And, and, and that's such a great point in that you gained life experience and you matured, you aged, you, you saw the world literally in your, in your case, right. Being in the military. And so you had a lot of knowledge that you wouldn't have otherwise had coming out of high school. And I'm a big fan of that too. Right. So maybe that's really the question it's not about whether college is necessary. It's whether college is, and, and, well, I think that still is the question though, uh, but, but whether college is necessary right away. And, and that's, I think, as much as anything, an impossible question to answer if you don't have enough perspective. How many people know really what they are going to want to do 10, 20, 30 years from now when they're 18 years old? It's nearly impossible. It's nearly impossible. And but I think it, I think the question is right. It, it's it's not whether college is valuable. I think the question is how can the person who's thinking about college, what 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 steps are they taking to determine their value with college, right? Because college is only as good as what you're willing to do with it, right? What's what's the purpose of me gaining on that knowledge if I'm not going to use it? And we can't say college is the path to success. Because two of America's most profitable companies, Microsoft and actually more, because you got Microsoft, college dropout, Apple, college dropout, Facebook, college dropout. It, it, it's, you see that trend here, right? The now let's, let's, simple... let's, let's add the caveat okay. that okay. we have to. They were dropping out of really good colleges. <laughs> they, Harvard. They, <laughs> that they, they, there, there you go. There's your thumbs up button that they had to work hard to get into in the first place. They had to yeah. be very studious. They had to have incredible potential. You don't just you know, find your, you know, just end up there. And so, and as much as anything, they were willing to put in the work independently. Now that's a huge that's right. X factor in all of this. So whatever it was in them, they had the maturity, the drive, the motivation to, build something independently of anyone else. Now that is rare. So I, I don't know that we can count on that being the norm for everyone to say, I'm going to build the next Facebook. But if you're willing to put in that effort and you have the right idea, I absolutely agree that you could be wasting your time, potentially missing a window of opportunity if you're in college. But it's, but Pete, the point I was trying to make with that is to go to college just to go to college, you're wasting your time. There has to be a purpose. There has to be a reason. And the reason your parents told you 20, 30 years ago, that reason changed. That reason changed. College provides a much different value today than what it did 30, 40 years ago. Because 30, 40 years ago, we didn't have the education or I'm sorry, we didn't have the access to the information that we do have right now. Back right. then, the only place you can go, right, was the library 
That's number one. Number two, any kind of a cable access television. And if you were lucky, maybe you got some of your neighbor's HBO, right? And you got to see some good documentaries and other things. But really, it depends on on your purpose. That's what I'm saying. And, and look, this is coming from a professor because I teach at a college today, right? And I got to be careful with this. When a student comes to me, Pete, and they ask me to teach because they all call me teach. Should I go get a master? Should I do this? Should I do that? And I stop them. I'm like, what do you want to do? Do you want to make money or do you want to be knowledgeable about something or passionate? They're like, I want to make money. I'm like, start a business, start a business, right? You don't need to go to college to make money, not here in America, right? You can just start a business and then you can do it that way. Now, if you are passionate about something, then yeah, go to college. Now, the caveat is if you want to be a doctor, an engineer, an attorney, you have to go to college. Sure. You have to, right? But I, the last thing I wanted for somebody to operate on me that they got their 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 experience from YouTube. Right? Well, I, I think there's an overlap though in what you just said, where you're starting a business without knowledge is 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 almost a, a recipe for failure. So gaining knowledge either through advanced education or through advanced experiences. So my staffing business that I started 18 years ago didn't require a college degree, but did require deep knowledge of sales, business, mm -hmm. you know, networking, you know, how, to, how to transact everything that I was going to need to do uh, to run the business successfully. So while that didn't need to be gained in college, it did need to be gained somehow. And I gained that experience. through, yeah, through experience. So to say start a business, you know, it, it isn't, I don't think it's that simple because from the day I started mine, people would say, I want to do that. I want to go start a business. And my first question was great. Doing what? I don't know yet. Well, then you have no business saying <laughs> you shouldn't be thinking about starting a business it, because the idea has to drive the opportunity, in my opinion, not the other way around. You can't just say, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Great. What are your skills? Well, I don't have I, any, but I actually I had a, this is so off topic, Ricky, but it's one of my favorite. No, stories. it's not. No, I, I, Pete, I don't think it is. This is perfect. I met a this, guy. Uh -huh. he, I certainly he's not going to be listening to this. So I don't mind telling the story. Okay. But this guy had... It appeared to have it all when, when I met him. Our kids were, my kids were young at the time. I would see this guy. He never seemed to be working, right? When I was, I was, I would show up for, you know, the, the, you know, daddy and donuts day and, and dressed in my you know suit and tie coming from an, in between appointments. This guy was wearing shorts and a t-shirt. This is, this is 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. And I was so envious of this guy. And one day a mutual friend said, he, this guy would like to meet with me because he's looking for a job. And the reason he was looking for a job when he got out of college, his family bought him a business. They said, what do you want to do? And he picked something and I won't mention because maybe it would get back to him. Mm -hmm. And they bought him a business and it ran into the ground over a couple of years. And then he found himself needing a job. So I was seeing this guy running around, you know, having a great time while he should have been working on this business that he had. And so I met with him. I said, great, well, let me find out what he wants to do. I'm happy to spend a few minutes. So we met for coffee and he, he said, I said, what do you want to do? He goes, well, I really don't want to work in an office. Okay. Well, then maybe sales, right? You seem to have a good personality. You, you present well. I don't want to have to sell anything. Okay. Well, what, what do you, <laughs> what do you have in mind then that you think you might be qualified to do? He goes, I'd like to be a consultant. And I said, consult about what? He said, whatever is needed to help people succeed in business. <laughs> and I thought I said, oh. I, I said it delicately. I'm like, well, I don't know that you have those qualifications given your recent track record, but go do your homework, get on the job yeah. boards and see what kind of positions you think you may be qualified for. My point is this is someone who did it the opposite way, right? Was get handed a business to run without any experience. Thought that it was uh, reasonable to go out in the world and hang a shingle as a consultant without any real value that they could bring. And so I think you could achieve it either through experience of work, learning from someone else or college, but it's not a given. That's where I think we're landing with this. So let's, but let's talk, let's explore some pros and cons of okay. um, going to college versus not. Now, as you said a minute ago, some professions, like if you're going to be a medical doctor, 
yep, you have to follow that path. <laughs> you, have you have to, to get the degrees and the education that goes with it. So many professions have that. So that's one. But what, what else? What are the other pros and reasons why college is a good thing? Well, I mean, it, it, it's, it's skilled development, right? You, 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 if you need a specific set of skills, right, that you could only get through the means of a traditional college format, then yes, you need that. Again, engineering, law, sciences, all, all of those areas. So you get networking, right? You get some colleges, those Ivy League colleges, that it doesn't matter what you learn, but as soon as you slap the name of that college or your resume, you're in a fraternity. Right. So that networking is there. That, but that that's very rare air. Don't you think? I don't think that applies beyond maybe 10 schools uh, in, well, in the country. Then that's that's very rare for stores, 10 schools. <laughs> right. But, but because those 10 schools are the only ones who would do that. Now, will you see somebody who has oh, you know what? Hold on. Really? Because I've seen situations, Pete, where people have hired other people just because they went to UF, just because they went to FSU, just because they went to Miami. The fraternity is there. I, I think, I think it's, it's I think it's loose if at best, and mm -hmm. that I I would not argue that's a reason to go to college no, because no. you you someone's going to potentially hire you because you went to the same school. I think that's I think that's a stretch. I don't know. The movie Old School says different. <laughs> well, look, <laughs> if you haven't seen that movie. I mean. There's, there's opportunity. You know, the, one of the arguments for is you, you, you know, you gain critical thinking skills, you gra gain you know, maturity and, and well, yes, but do you really in that bubble environment uh, of a college campus? And we've seen a lot in the news lately about how college students are behaving publicly and responding to some of the things going on in the world. And it's a bubble that, yeah. that and, and what you can get away with in that environment may not be the best training for what life outside of that environment is like. I kind of think it is. I kind of think it is because if you, because I know exactly what you're talking about, you got these college students that they feel like they have to stand up for their rights, quote unquote, and go ahead and do it and see how society at large responds to that, right? I think the the pushback a college students would get in that environment is exactly the lesson they need. And what better place to make that mistake than doing that in a college format versus at work where your career could be jeopardized, right? Only only if only if you learn from the mistake, right? And I think that's, that's what may be true. lacking with a lot of the things that we see right now, where you're you know the the some of the things going on on college campuses aren't. There's no downside to it. There's no penalty for 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 the, where yeah, in the true. real world you can't just decide, hey, I'm going to you know protest whatever I decide to to protest that day at my at my job, right? In my profession, you and I were talking about something right before we started recording, where you said, hey, this is something that I might want to put out some content on, but yeah. a big percentage of my clients won't like it, so I'm not going to do it. That's real, right? Yep. That is a real consideration. You have a belief. Yep you're you you have it for a good reason we all have things that we that, that are important to us individually but we have to consider what we put out in the in the world and and what's going to come back to us so yes we have freedom to say whatever we want but there's also consequences that's called critical thinking i learned well, that in college <laughs> well may, you know but but may, maybe not right in, in yeah. college so that's but but what what are the positives let's let's stay on the positive track because i it, i'm I am a big fan of higher education for in the right circumstances, for the right individuals, for the right reasons. So that's, I don't want to come across too much. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I, you know, I want to talk through the positives and listen, I'd be hypocritical as a college grad, as someone who's, you know, as of you know, next fall, three of my you know, four children will be in college or have graduated from college. I guess, hopefully by then I'm knocking on my yeah. desk, two have, will have graduated and a third one starting. And then the fourth is on that trajectory as well. But if the four, number four comes and says, Hey, I have an alternative plan. I'm, I'm going to be open to it. So, but that's a different, that's a different discussion. I wanted to ask. Yeah. But no, because it, it's, I'm having that conversation right now with my family. We have a 10 year old, right? And now we're starting to have those conversations where my wife is like, no, he's going to go to college. And I'm saying, I'm going to let him decide. I'm going to let him decide if he wants to go to the military first, I'll support it. 
If he wants to go to college first, I'll support it. If he wants to run, start his own business, go work for a little bit, I'll support it. You know what I'm not going to support? Him doing nothing. I'm right. not going to support that, right? Well, what's it, worse, it, it, right, or what's better, someone going to college is to, to figure it out while they're there, right? And that's an expensive thing to, to, to do. Or, hey, I'm going to go get some real-world experience that may help me figure it out as, as I go. I'll, I'll answer that question with the answer to this question. How many people would you guess are currently in their, in, the, in their career path right now? Not because they love the career path they chose, but because they've already invested 20 years of their life into this career path, they might as well see it through. Right? How many people do you think, what percentage of the workforce do you think falls under that category? I mean, how many people are dissatisfied with what they're doing, but feel stuck? I mean, is that really the question? Or how many I don't people... want to say dissatisfied, but how, how many? Well, you know what? Yeah. How many people are not happy with their career? Or doing it only career? because they feel like they have to, maybe. Because they spend so much time on it already. Yeah. I, right? I'd like say, 20 I'd years at most. So, right? Most. So, so there's the answer. There's the answer. I think if you, if, if, if we push our kids to go to college, just because that's the thing to do, we run the risk of them having to pick something because they have to go down this road and then they're going to end up that way. I really think the best thing to do is just to be, let them be the driver in their car and you're be their GPS, it's right? Where do you want to go? I'll take you there. Right. Of, of, when you think about who's advising young people. It's the, the 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 parents that we're talking about right now who probably would have done it differently if they could have started over and chosen a different path. I mean, there are people who have found their careers in, and that's that's mm -hmm. ultimately what we're talking about here. That's the goal. It's not about how you get there. It's about getting there, where you end up. And there are people who, and I've I've met lots of them, but but it's not the majority. Right. And, and you have yeah. you know, high school and college counselors, you know, giving giving advice. that may not be the advice that they wish they had followed. Right. But they have to give it that. that so I've had a couple of conversations recently with college career office, you know, career professionals who've said I who've said, oh, I have to say this because right? <laughs> right? it's because because who my employer is. Well, that's Isn't that not weird. Good. No, it's not good at all, at all. It, it, it's, I, I think, in, and look, we've had this conversation before. I really think, and is, this is going to come off wrong, but I'm going to say it, like how other countries are doing it right, where people, in, well, as soon as they hit 18, they go do two years in, in the military, yep. see what the world and life is all about, and then come back and figure out what you want to, what place you want to hold in this world that you've explored for a couple of years, right? So that's why, to me right now, yes, credibility and recognition is a good thing if you go to college. And networking is a good thing. The critical thinking, problem solving skills, the career opportunities are all a good thing. But I'm, 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 I'm going to go on on a, on a limb here. You can still find those things without going to college. You, you can. Today. And those countries who have that service requirement, if it, if, if it were here, I think, man, if you, you it doesn't have to be military. It could be any kind of civil service. Something, what a great yeah. thing that would be. Absolutely. We'd be so much better off. We're not going to change that, unfortunately, today. I'm, we should I'm, run for president. We should run for president. You run for president. I'll be your VP. And I've been like, look, something happens to my boy over here. You'll step We're going to have Taco Tuesdays every day. Well, well yeah, I'm sur but I am surprised that, that uh, there's, uh, there has to be reasons that you and I haven't explored as to why that is never talked about in the U S but yeah. it, 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 the countries who, who uh, do have those policies seem to um, do well by them. But you, you did mention something again, as a positive that there's credibility associated with having that college degree, whether it's deserved or not, it exists, especially with a lot of baby boomers and Gen Xers who are in the positions of leadership and authority today. And so I've been told in my um, job as a staffing professional many times over where, hey, it, it, this job requires this degree. Uh. Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> the answer gets a little fuzzy. Yep. I left or, or there's a company that I worked for years ago who had a requirement you could not be promoted above a director level 
or maybe even into a director level. I can't remember exactly unless you had a master's degree. That makes no How sense. How arbitrary is that? What a terrible no thing. Sense. Awful. And yet that's their policy. And this was a public company with thousands of employees. So these things still exist, whether they should or not is irrelevant. And so we have to acknowledge that at, at some level when making these decisions and in, in forming an opinion on is college worth it? Because that's a real factor. You A lot of doors will be closed to you yep. without a college degree still today. And here, and here's what I tell my clients, right? Whenever they, they, they ask me to take a look at their job to, descriptions to update them, and I always see college degree required. And I ask, why is that there? You don't need that. You don't need that because what's going to end up ha for most positions, right? It, it, it's again, we talked about the sciences and law and everything, but I tell them you don't need that because here's what you want to do. And here's what I look for, Pete. I don't look for the education you have. I look for the behaviors that the education I'm looking for is supposed to exhibit, right? For example, the difference between knowledge and intelligence. Knowledge is you having all this information. Knowledge is you graduating from college and you get this, this, this lambskin that says you have earned X credit and you now have all these skills. That doesn't mean anything to me. You know what means everything to me? How you use those skills. Now we're transferring into intelligence, right? So what I tell people, is, clients is, instead of requiring a, a degree, Put a requirement of the actions that you want, the behaviors you want to see from that degree. That's way better because if you ask for a degree, you're going to get just that. Somebody that has the degree but doesn't necessarily uses it, right? Well, so in the interview process, that's what you want to look for. Well, yeah, when it comes to interviewing you know, college graduates, you, you have almost two types of degrees. And this may be too much of a generalization. You have specialized degrees where – Someone is going to school to obtain that degree to be in that specific profession. We've mentioned a couple of them, right? Being mm -hmm. a medical doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. If you get an engineering degree, you can change your mind along the way, of course, but companies are going to hire you out of college with the intention of you being an engineer for them, right? But then you take the mass of degrees that exist, liberal arts degrees, where Companies have no idea what they're hiring an individual for. And a lot of times the individuals have no idea what kind of job they're even qualified for, which is to say not many, or what kind of job they should pursue. What a, I mean, just that alone <laughs> kind of speaks volumes about how flawed the system is. I graduated with a political science degree. I was qualified professionally to do absolutely nothing, right? That is a fact. Wait a minute, Pete. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. You spent four years at least at an institution I did where you had to even. submit work and you had to earn that work. So you have shown that when you start something, you are committed to it and you finish that project. You don't think that's a skill set? I think that's a stretch, right? Really? To, to say, yeah. I mean, you know, because if you looked at my GPA, you would, you would realize I wasn't that committed to, to it along the way. I, I did, I'll, I'll just say it. I did rel basically the bare minimum to, to pass the, the, the classes that I need to. Now, I invested a lot of my personal time, my free time in student government while I was a student. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did, I was, I'm more proud of those achievements. I learned more from that, that activity than I did through the four years of classes. So I won't say college was a waste for me. But the college degree itself didn't provide you know, any inherent value in what I could deliver to whoever so, hired me. So here I am almost moving my goalposts because based on what you just said, the college itself didn't give you the education you felt like you needed, but the college experience did. Well, I, I took it, it – yes, circum, as my circumstances led to that. Right. Okay. I uh, it was very involved in student government for a number of years and, and, and was a student senator and director of student lobbying while I was at Florida State. I did a lot of things that had nothing to do with being in school. And so, yes, the, the, it did. The environment 
presented those opportunities. I was involved in a fraternity. I, I, yeah. it was, in, it did things through, through that organization as well. And my network grew. So yeah, I mean, all those things, those are in the positive column, but those aren't a given. If you go to college, you could just as easily go to college and not join any clubs, not be involved in any right. extracurriculars and go through and have that same political science degree. And I would still argue you're not qualified to do anything with it when you get out of school. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know, man. I'm still on the fence on that one because I have seen situations where we've have hired people, right, with a college degree in music, right? And we hired them to do something else, right? And because in the interview, they have shown some some of the behaviors that we are looking for, right? Now we didn't discount it just because it was a liberal arts degree. Just how you handle yourself with that information and going forward. Now, I don't make it a requirement. I don't do that, right? Because again, I'm looking for those behaviors, but I think you can put that in the positive column that the college experience is just as valuable. And I use that in air quotes as the reason you're going to college, the education you get there, right? But the piece people forget, and I cannot stress this enough, Pete, getting the education is not enough that college degree gets you in the door. How you use your college degree is what keeps you inside of the other side of that door. I, I think it's and time that's the goes piece on. that people need to fully understand. Because as a teacher, Pete, let me tell you, I cannot tell you how many times when students are about to graduate, they think that the heavens are going to open up and jobs are just going to fall on their laps. And I'm like, guys, it so does not work that way. You no. still need, you, you're still going to start at the bottom. It's like Navy sealed, right? I know a couple of them, right? And here's the one thing that they have told me. They're like, as soon as you finish BUDS, like six months of training, you think you've done it all. And then you get to the unit, you're still the boot. You're still the new guy. You're still the rookie. Right. They're like, you think you're special because you finished that? No, you still got to do all these things. <laughs> Same thing with a college experience, right? You still need to pay your dues. And and certainly some degrees, it, the, the, they, should, they could almost be stack ranked as far as what opportunities exist when you when you come out but by default no one is looking employers aren't seeking out for specific jobs those those you know a lot of the students you know with with degrees that aren't specific to anything yeah. they just Faster aren't reading. and and in the field it and and it's become very crowded too right yeah. that's another thing college degrees used to be more meaningful because fewer people had them and so that's also so you know you could make you have to have to decide as an employer who's more valuable to you someone who's been in college for 4 years and earns a degree that really doesn't apply to your to to the, your business or someone who was committed to doing learning you know something for 4 years that's that's somewhat related to the business or at least transferable skills and they 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 stuck to it for 4 years and they were promoted along the way maybe and they came with all this actual real world experience that they can apply to you know for you now. Who's a better hire? I don't know. If they're hungry, that's second person. Well, I mean <laughs> that's second person. I hire for hunger, Pete. Yeah, and and so I think it it just we have to acknowledge that it's checking that box to get the bachelor's degree doesn't buy you what it used to. Right? Correct. Is that is that fair? No, it's fair. And it is not the only avenue, right? Because the reason our parents told us that back in the 80s is exactly how you said there isn't, there was very few people with this. So therefore that degree made it more valuable. And the jobs that our parents were trying to get us away from the dirty jobs, the plumbers, electricians, constructors, they're the ones making bank right now. Pete, when I was a recruiter for Sears, well, I mean, I wasn't a recruiter. I was managing a recruiting team. You know how hard it was to find an HVAC tech in California? We were offering $45 an hour and we cannot find anybody. Right. 45 bucks an hour. A lot of people applied, but not the people with the right qualifications. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and you can, you, and you can you know, apply that to so many trades right now yeah. that exist where there's a shortage. That is something that you know, we just did a podcast a few weeks ago on alternate career paths and options. So we're, we're going to continue to produce a lot of content exploring these different options, right? And yeah. trying to help young people as much as anything else. I mean, this is really what it's about. Make that determination without 
blindly going forward and you know saying this is the answer without asking all the right questions that that to me is what's most important this is the answer without asking all the right questions i like that okay. i no seriously we'll, we'll, i like that we'll, we'll keep it then <laughs> yes, we'll i really like that no because that 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 wow that part's important because sometimes you're asking all the wrong questions and then somebody answers it in such a way that like I wasn't, I was never even looking at it that way. Well, you're not asking like, them at all. Right. I, I have this distinct image in my like a picture of when my uh, oldest was uh, getting ready to go to high school. We went to a, an open house at, at, at the school she ended up going to and the admissions director put up a slide that I then saw subsequent times with my other uh, students who went to, or students, my kids who went to the same high school, but it was a, a chart of, uh, of all the colleges where the grad you know, senior class had gone the year before and the percentage of uh, students that went to college. That's what they were selling the value of that school with, not how they were going to succeed, what we were preparing for the, them for in the real world. It was just that metric as the most meaningful one of all. And I don't think there were any others. <laughs> and so as a parent, because that's what they knew parents valued and wanted to see. So who was asking the question about whether that was what is important or most important yeah. or, or uh, what happened to those kids? I want, I'd, I'd be more interested in where they were 10 years later. Right. 20 years. Exactly. Later. That, that is a much better uh, KPI that right there, right? Not just who went from that high school, the people who went, who found a career they're passionate about, who is successful in their own mind, right? Because everybody has a different um, uh, definition of success. Are they happy with what they chose to do? You show me those metrics, that is something I'm going to use to make a decision or whether I send my kid there. Just because you got billions and billions sold, McDonald's does that. That doesn't mean, I mean, it's a great marketing, Right? But it doesn't mean it's the best for you. So that's the number I want to look. How many of those students are happy, are happy with the choice that, that, that they made? And so we got to define happy. Well, we, we all have to define that for ourselves individually. And you know, I'll direct anyone listening to the blog that's on uh, zengig.com about finding your icky guy. Finding, you know, if it's a word you're unfamiliar with, it's a Japanese term that we repurpose to it really means purpose, finding purpose in life, mm -hmm. but we've, we've changed it around a little bit to be focused on purpose in your career. And it's, what are you good at? What do you like doing? What does the world need? And then what can you be paid for? I mean, those four components should all be considered. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of, of that now being a question that you should pose to younger people. It's a question I'm posing to my children. Right. And say, don't consider those things. Take the time to get that right. And then yeah. choose your path accordingly. And if that path is to college, great. That's wonderful. Let's, let's, let's support that. Let's encourage that. But if it's an alternate path, let's not dismiss it. Right. Let's make yeah. sure that, that we right. give that equal you know, credibility and, and invest time in, in learning more about it. I think that the, the best thing we can do as to teach this next generation, again, is to just be their GPS, be their GPS, figure out what makes them tick, figure out what makes them happy. And you know what, Pete, I just started thinking that way about five years ago. And the reason I started thinking that way five years ago is because I started seeing on social media, something that it scared me back then, but now I'm okay with, I'm seeing a lot of people, a lot of young kids. And by young, I mean like out of, out of high school, right? They decide to sell everything they own and they go live in a van. Have you seen that, that, that trend? Yeah. Yeah. At first, no, but it's just, at first I'm like, what are they doing? But then the more I think about it, look, are they happy? Do they have a job? Do they, are they doing what makes them happy and they're not hurting? Yes. Then who cares what I think, right? <laughs> if they're happy with it, fine. Right. Well, and, 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 I, it, and if you're going to do it, right, what a great time to do it as a young person. Absolutely. Ah, oh, dude. It, yes. I tell every young person that I see right now is get the stuff out of your system right now. Right. And I'm a big proponent, either join the military or travel the world on your own after high school, figure out what is it that you're passionate about. And then as long, and I, I hate to sound hokey, but I'm going to say it. 
as long as what you do, you're happy with, you're passionate about, you it drives you, the money's going to come. Absolutely. The money's going to come. That's right. So focus on that. You and I are in complete agreement on that for sure. So Ricky, I think we've covered this enough for today. <laughs> I encourage anyone listening, if you're a parent of a young person, if you are a young person trying to figure this out, follow us on Zengig, get on our website, Zengig.com. This is what we're focused on now. This is, this is a direction we're going in. We're really trying to help young people figure this out. And we're going to figure it out along the way too, because we're posing some questions and exploring some things that aren't necessarily going to be popular with, with a lot of folks. Some of the conversations I've had with colleges recently who I want to partner with, they yeah. they don't like when we bring this topic up. They, they're not a fan of it. So, <laughs> I wonder why. But we have to be true to what we believe right. is is real. And we're going to do that. And so we're going to push this and we're going to question it. And 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 I'm gonna do do my best to take it to the high school level too and see how much this message is really being shared with young people who may still be told, go get a job, go get a degree so you can get a job. We know that's dated information now. And there's so much more to, to, to you know, a profession and a career and the world at large. So we're going to keep pushing the envelope. If you have questions for us, super easy questions at zengig.com. We'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you could rate and review the show five stars, that would be awesome. So more people can listen. Anything else, Ricky, right. or do we cover it all? No, no. I think I think we beat a certain animal to death. Good. <laughs> With this one. So we're good. We did that. All right. Well, happy new year, everyone. Let's make it a great 2024. Ricky, thank you as always. Thank you. Have a good one. And uh, yeah, I'm sticking with Miami still. Go ahead. <laughs> Bye.